Now let us consider the reproduction and the life cycle of Spirozoa. Spirozoa reproduces by vegetative method, asexual method, and also sexual method. This vegetative method is by fragmentation. So when the filament grows to a long size, either it is accidentally broken or the cross walls dissolve, breaking into pieces, each piece develops into a Spirozoa filament. Asexual method is by chlamydospores and echinates. Sexual method is by conjugation. This conjugation is of two types. One is scalariform conjugation and another is lateral conjugation. This lateral conjugation is again of two types, indirect and direct. Now let us see these methods one by one. I have already told you the fragmentation is by breaking the filament into pieces and each piece can develop into a new plant. Now let us see asexual method, chlamydospores. What are chlamydospores in a spirozoa filament? If the conditions are not favorable, that is unfavorable conditions, the protoplasm separates from the cell wall and rounds off condenses and it forms into a spore inside the cell. This spore produces a very thin wall around. So when the protoplasm rounds off and forms into a spore, it is called chlamydospore. So these chlamydospores in spirozoa are produced during unfavorable conditions and naturally when they don't have flagella, they can also be called a planospores. Echinates. In the previous sessions, we have seen what are echinates. In echinates, the protoplasm does not condense. The cell remains as it is and each cell develops or forms a thick wall around like this. So the thick wall makes it resistant to unfavorable conditions and they can survive for long periods under drought conditions. Next, we see the sexual methods. The sexual method is by a process called conjugation. So in conjugation, two cells participate. Whether it is a scalariform conjugation or lateral conjugation, two cells should participate in the sexual reproduction. Let us see scalariform conjugation. Scalariform meaning ladder. This is the ladder. Two filaments participate in conjugation. So in scalar form conjugation, two filaments lie parallel to each other and one cell corresponds to the cell of other filament. One filament can be called plus, another can be called minus. Means the sexes are separate, but since they cannot be identified morphologically, they cannot be called male or female, but they should be called plus strain and minus strain. Now these two filaments produce protuberances in opposite directions. Suppose this cell produces a protuberance like this and this in the opposite direction like this. So let us redraw this diagram. So these protuberances grow in opposite directions and finally they come to contact with each other. And where they came into contact with each other, the cell wall here dissolves forming a canal here like this. In the meanwhile, the protoplast in each cell condenses and rounds off and now the protoplast we call it gamete. Naturally, the cell that produces the gamete should be called gametangium. The canal that is produced in between two cells is called conjugation tube. Now look at these two filaments. They exactly look like a ladder. That is why the name scalariform conjugation. Next, the protoplast or the gamete of one cell starts migrating into another cell by what is called amoeboid movement. So finally, this gamete enters into this cell and fertilizes. So when the gamete from one cell moves into the another cell and fertilizes with the other gamete, now it becomes zygote. These are haploid because the filaments are haploid only. Now this zygote is diploid. Here these two gametes are exactly identical. Both are morphologically similar. But one gamete moves into another cell, but physiologically these two are unequal. 
So it is morphological isogamy, but physiological anisogamy. Though morphologically both are identical, but physiologically in activity, these two differ from each other. So one is active and another is sedentary. So that is why it is called physiological anisogamy. Is it necessary that always from one filament the gametes go to another filament? It is not so. Sometimes half of the filament, see in this, the alternate cells are, means every filament has both plus and minus. The alternate cells have these zygotes. Or if both the gametes are morphologically as well as physiologically isogamous, both of them move into the conjugation tube and the zygote is now in the conjugation tube. So here both the filaments are morphologically as well as physiologically isogamous. So this is scalariform conjugation. Now let us see lateral conjugation. In lateral conjugation, the cells present in one filament participate in sexual reproduction. So here no filaments are required. So here the sexual reproduction takes place between two adjacent cells. Say let us consider this cell and this cell. These two cells participate in conjugation. So each cell produces a protuberance just adjacent to two, the septum like this and they grow in opposite directions. The protoplast rounds off forming a gamete. Now these two lateral protuberances join with each other and at the place of joining the cell walls dissolve here, thus establishing a lateral conjugation tube. Now as in the case of scalariform conjugation, either one gamete may move into another cell and fuse with this or both of them join at the conjugation tube and the zygote is found in the conjugation tube. This lateral conjugation is of indirect type. So finally in a filament the zygote may be found in one cell or it may be found in the conjugation tube. So this is indirect lateral conjugation. Now let us see direct lateral conjugation. Direct lateral conjugation takes place between two cells which are adjacent to the hold fast, means this cell and this cell. This acts as male and this acts as female. In the second cell from the base, the protoplasm becomes a gamete and this gamete when compared to the female gamete, this is a smaller in size and it has a small projection called papilla. This gamete pierces through the cross wall between these two and enters into the female cell and the fertilization takes place. So this is direct lateral conjugation. So whatever be the method, the zygote, this is the zygote deployed, it forms a thick resistant wall around and undergoes a period of rest. So in this insisted condition, it is called zygospore which is deployed. This can survive for prolonged periods under unfavorable conditions. When conditions favor, that is when the pond is filled with water, this zygospore germinates. So life cycle of spirozoera. Life cycle of spirozoera is haplontic. Here spirozoera asexual reproduction. So spirozoera produces chlamydospores, otherwise aplanospores and pekinates. Spirozoera is haploid, these are also haploid and they give rise to again spirozoera. In sexual reproduction, spirozoera produces gametangia, these gametangia plus minus, they produce gametes. These gametes plus minus and these gametes are non-motile means no flagella or cilia. These gametes fuse, zygote is produced, zygote is deployed. The movement of these gametes is amoeboid and this zygote may be found in one cell or in the conjugation tube and this zygote undergoes a period of rest. And that resting period is zygospore stage, means it produces a thick wall around so that it is resistant under unfavorable conditions. 
This zygospore diploid. This undergoes meiosis and the nuclei. After meiosis, haploid nuclei are produced. Three degenerate, and this germinates to produce spirozoa filament. So this is the life cycle of spirozoa. Since the diploid stage is confined to only two. This is zygote and the zygospore, and all other stages are haploid. So this life cycle is called haplontic life cycle.